Ticket with the programming. I'm Jay Singram. I'm Captain America. And along with me is Bill Grundler. Wolverine. Happy Friday, everyone. Yeah, happy Friday. Happy Friday. Oh, it was, it, oh uh, Good Friday? It's like it, Easter's this weekend? Is that's that, right. It is a Good Friday. And it is Good Friday. It is a Good Friday. Yeah. yeah which is, well, Easter in March. I don't know why I say sound feels like a sin, but <laughs> like... Right, right. Well, why? you want to know what's weird is how, why, why is, and, and I'm, dude, and I'm Catholic. Like, I mean, I was why brought up Catholic. Catholic. So, yeah. I mean, like, I, like, these are, these are big holidays. You, you know, know what I mean? Like, I get it. Yeah. But, okay, at least like Christmas, it's the same day. How does Easter keep moving around? Well, I thought Easter traditionally was the first weekend in April. Like, that's just the date at which it lands on. So yeah. April, the second, somebody correct me. I should, I should know this. Yeah, I know. I've been around long enough, but you're right. It's a moving target. And I, yeah. It's just, it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. Yeah. But I mean, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Um, how, how was, uh, I feel like this week was a, with all of the open stuff and the shuffle of that and the quarter mm -hmm. stuff coming out. I, well, I Mel like Melanie said leap year. Oh. It's just weird because it's like, but it's only a day. Like it doesn't change the calendar. It's a day, but maybe know. like leap year is just one of those weird. Maybe it's just going to be a weird year because of that. Maybe everything shifted a little bit. Sarah Cooper, what does Chase's shirt say? Well, I don't know if Kyle's here yet, but if I can, uh, I'll, I'll put mine up there. It's pretty cool. Yeah, check this out. I'm getting shit wrecked. I got my ship wrecked. Because it's CrossFit ship, or you can use whatever you want. But uh, yeah, CrossFit shipwreck sent us some shirts. I figured I'd, I'd wear one. Thanks, Kyle. Yeah, yeah, Kyle, that was awesome. I got mine too. And if I remember, I Kyle just opened up his affiliate like this year. So this is year one, I believe. Which is pretty cool, dude. Pretty cool. I I, I have to say, with all of the stuff, with all of the stuff, mm -hmm. I do love the fact that there are people that are still like, I'm in, man. Like I wanna, I wanna, I wanna be part of that. I wanna do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, whatever, whatever you think about how things are, if you think it's the greatest, if you think that, you know, it's all messed up, but whatever the deal is, but like, just to bite off on the methodology. Oh, yeah, this is what, this is what I want to talk about. So it's uh, just real fast. Sevon had um, uh, John Singleton on his show this morning. Yeah, I saw that. And, and it was a great show. They were talking about High Rocks and, you know, John's from Europe. And so, and High Rocks came from Europe. It was, I think, a German thing is where it started, I think. Was it really? I think so, yeah. I think, uh, uh, you know, Logan, uh, MC Logan? Yeah. So, I, so she was doing some of the original um, MCing for like the first ones. Mm. And anyway, so I, it, you know, it's big over there and everyone's talking about whether it's, you know, it, we, CrossFit is getting compared to it a lot. And one of the things that, you know, using High Rocks as a model or, you know, how to, how to devise their, their big championships, whatever, mm -hmm. the difference that we have compared to every other sport that's out there, it, the big difference, and we get caught up in our own deal with this, is we are a fitness methodology right, and a sport. Yes. And so we have in the past always tried to have those joined up because it was our people in our fitness methodology doing our sport. Mm -hmm. And then obviously it's branched out over the years and stuff like that. But I mean, we get caught up in that. And so it's really hard to, for us to copy what high rocks is doing, which like they don't have fitness methodology. It's like at 45 doesn't have it's a race a competition. It's like, like it, exactly. It would be like the one race. marathon race, you know, like one, right. One event, one oh. thing. So it's so hard to do that. So I really like the fact as much as a competitor person as I am and a, and a program geek and a, and a, I will, I want to race all the time and compete all the time. And the whiteboard, dude, the methodology, like you have to, it, I, I really appreciate the people that like want to do a gym because they know what the methodology will do. Yes. And so it's really cool to see that. So I'm stoked for Kyle and I, I hope that, you know, he, he has a lot of success with his gym. It's not an easy <laughs> space, man. It's not, it's not an easy space to be in. No, it's, uh, listen, any entrepreneur venture 
small business owning person is not an easy space. No. This this narrative of that, oh, this, you know, the affiliate model, it's so hard. I'm like, open up a restaurant and tell me how long that's gonna last, or a bar or a boutique, anything. Like just open up a business and you have no idea how hard it is to be a self-made human being. It's just the nature of being an entrepreneur. Yeah. Owning your own business is really hard, no matter what business you decide to go down. I would argue being a cross affiliate is the easiest small business to start, which could be the problem for some people because it was too easy <laughs> for them to start and they probably shouldn't have done that to begin with or at least learn more before they did. Oh, dude, I didn't know shit. <sighs> I didn't do None it as a business. Did. None of us did until like four years ago when Cross is like, hey, we should probably teach these guys how to be businessmen like before they, before they go to the school of hard business knocks. I, I didn't get it. I didn't get it until I retired from fire and realized, oh, I don't have the same amount of money coming in anymore. Right. Oh, shit. Like a lot more, a lot of money, a lot of money was not coming in and trying to figure that out and being like, okay, you can't just open up the doors and high five everybody. Like there, there is an element to that, you know, like a, a, a business element to that. But I mean, even, even with all of the, even with all of the stuff, all of the internal turmoil, um, mm. all of it, like I, I applaud anyone that that believes in the methodology that much because I think really like that's where oh, it yeah. is right now. It isn't that's like, hard. oh sweet, I'm gonna do it. So sweet, because everyone's gonna come because it's CrossFit. And it's dude, it's not like build it and they will come anymore. Like that's it's not that it's not that mm -hmm. thing. It's yeah. not a it's not the underground fight club anymore. It's 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 very mainstream. I mean, people know what it is. And that's there's a lot of other clubs out there that came from or tried to be the underground fight club that weren't there. But like when saying yeah, it's like, yeah. oh, people don't walk in the door anymore. It's like, because you were the only door. Right. You were the only right. door. Now there's lots of other doors out there that have only started because of CrossFit. Yeah. That's the only reason you see these other things. And, and to finish off your High Rocks point, what I think is funny is that like, I like that event. That right. one workout they do is cool. Right? And what's funny about it is like they have their own, you can be a High Rocks gym. I was like, you yeah, know what, what you the best strength and conditioning program is in the world to make you good at High Rocks is? Yeah, CrossFit. CrossFit. <laughs> Dude, it's totally true. Like, I mean, that's part of the whole thing is like, oh, compare this to that. It's like, I'm not shitting on that at all. What I'll shit on is like any like bold claims of being the fittest people on earth. Absolutely unequivocally not, not even close. There's a reason we can go over there and be successful and they can't even get out of the open. No, that's right. not true. I guess, you know, they can get to quarterfinals, maybe win the open, depending <laughs> on what pictures you look at. By certain, right. Uh, media outlets, but. That's the cool thing, and that's what I love to see. And what I what I like is, and some people we had did a podcast a while ago where, oh, people are starting to leave CrossFit gyms because they find um, better ways to get in shape. They're like they go to weightlifting or they go to triathlons or they get burnt out of the training. I was like, you know, the only reason why they can do those things is because they had a baseline of CrossFit for how long, however long they were in the gym. CrossFit is not meant to be just CrossFit. CrossFit is meant to be the catalyst to allow you to do whatever you want. Yeah. You want to go weightlifting and compete? Great. Thank you, CrossFit, for getting me there. You want to go yeah. become a triathlete? Triathlete? Great. Thank you, CrossFit, for getting me there. You want to become a High Rocks world champion? Great. Thank you, CrossFit, for getting me there. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's really crazy. <sighs> but um, I like High Rocks, and that's the thing. I'm not bagging on it at all. I've, I, I, uh, we've been saying for years the event that should be a, that should be one of the events. Should be a High Rocks event. They yeah, should totally with them. It's one and the same. The only how, the only way you get good is doing constantly varied functional movements executed at high intensity. That's it. That's how you train for High Rocks. And what does the win? <laughs> okay, and and think about it. What does the winner? What would you crown the winner of High Rocks? The fastest the, the, person. The best high rocks racer. Right. Okay. That's it. That's Last it. Last example. Last example. So if Murph became a traveling event. Oh, dude. They called it, 
what just call it Murph, whatever you want right, to call right. it, Murph. One mile run, 100 pull ups, 200 push ups, 300 air squats, one mile run, all with a 20 and 14 pound vest. We're going to open up Murph gyms. <laughs> the <laughs> fittest race on earth. Like, no, it's a workout. Yeah. One that everyone's training for all year round. And now we're going to open up Murph gyms <laughs> because why? Uh, and I, you yeah, know I, how I, you're going to get good at Mr. Murph world championships? Constantly varied functional movements executed at high intensity. Yeah. Also yeah. known as CrossFit. It's the basis it's for it. Sorry, so, right, guys. We, it's so ours. <laughs> yeah. Like we, like, yeah. yeah. Well, here, you know what, you know what the other thing is, um, especially for like all the other, because it has become very mainstreamy CrossFit mm -hmm. is, uh, in a lot of these other style gyms, whether it's, you know, red hypothesis or <laughs> M62 or whatever Larry, the other ones Larry, are out there. Larry's, you know? Larry's boot camp, Right. <laughs> Larry's good old Larry's. Um, they all they all came from what we do and the reason is is because they know that it works and people were excited about it so they had to they had to dip into it somehow and it's our job especially as affiliate owners if we can't say why it's different like you better as an affiliate owner and me my mm -hmm. affiliate we have an orange theory in an f45 in a boot camp and a we have all those in town yeah. We have kettlebell gyms. We have whatever. If someone comes to me and says, well, you know, why should I join? Why should I join CrossFit, though? I better be able to tell them why, what we are able to offer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but doesn't so-and-so do CrossFit type gyms and me be able to explain that? Because if I can't, then I don't really know what I'm doing. I don't really know CrossFit. Yeah. So all the people that 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 are affiliate owners that are out there that are um, you know, worried about these other gyms or these other things or trying to scale down, you know, bringing their, their programming down because they don't want to scare people, whatever the reason, <laughs> like you better know what it is that you're given. I need to, this is my medicine. I'm the doctor of this shit. I need to know the medication that I'm giving to my people and I need to know exactly how it's going to work. Mm -hmm. And I do. And I, I do. I love the conversation. Everyone else hates it. Yeah. I think most people hate it. I love the conversation. All Let right, me tell more, you why it's better. One more question here, because we're supposed to talk about quarterfinals. No, I know. It's okay. actually a great conversation to have. I, I love it. Uh, David Johnson, by comparison, how many of the 10 general physical skills does High Rocks include? I would say most of them. Speed, not so much. Power, strength. not so much. Strength, I mean, that sled push they have in the middle of that is heavy. Like, you, can't, you cannot push that fast and be weak. Right, how, but the, how the far middle, is the push? The, uh, I don't know. Fifty meters. It's far enough to where, like, that's the one I hear about all the time. They've got what farmer yeah, carries. And, and why do you hear about it? Sandbag lunges. Because the people that do that are not strength no, athletes; that's, that's they're endurance athletes. Yes, but that means you need strength to be good at it. So that kind of makes the argument. Uh, Speed and power, I feel like, are not a part of that. Um. You could say they all dabble in there. What is it? Uh, coordination, agility, accuracy. Is those three? What's that? Flexibility. So those are the bottom four. Those are the ones you practice at the top: cardio, respiratory, uh, endurance, stamina, strength, speed, power in the middle. God, what's the one I'm missing at the top? This is embarrassing. I mean, it, there's there's a lot in there, but it's, it, like I said, it's an event. One. One event. If you have if you have any sort of multiple stage deal like that, of course you're going to have a high number of. Mm. But it's not like that's the most inclusive. It's the ultimate fitness workout. Okay, come on, stop. Yeah, no, it's not. No, it's not. But it's a great one. I like it. No, it's okay. cool. Speaking of ultimate fitness workouts, quarterfinals. Okay, first gut gut reaction, first instinct. What was your call? First. First thought. Oh, what do you mean? When you heard, when you heard what Dave was saying. I heard the fabled. Yeah. How many events? First, being? first thought. First thought. Uh, I my first gut reaction, and I'm I'm a gut reaction kind of guy. That's gotten me in trouble quite a bit. <laughs> was that's not enough events. <laughs> yeah. 
But it's funny because I think traditionally, quarterfinals has only been five events, and we're only taking away one. If you guys have just, if you guys are just finding out, Dave Castro was on the town hall. Oh yeah, list, list, list it out. List it out. Yeah, list it out. Uh, oh, yeah. So let me list out. Dave Castro was on. There was a worldwide affiliate town hall meeting yesterday. There once a month. There has everybody in the top C suites of CrossFit. Don Fall, Jada Coons, Dave Castro, Nicole Carroll, uh, the new CMO, um, Jenna. How do you say your last name? I don't know. I don't know. But they're, they're all there every time with a couple special people. This year is uh, Denise Thomas and, and this year, this month. Uh, so if you guys are affiliate owners and you're missing those, they're free to attend, like attend them because they give information. And Dave was on there talking about quarterfinals. And uh, if you're an affiliate, you can be on that call. And Dave said, the quarterfinals this year are going to stay true to their charter of the unknown and unknowable is what they let off with. That said is like quarterfinals will be four workouts, specifically those four workouts. There's going to be six days for quarterfinals. I'm assuming the first two workouts will be Wednesday through Saturday, submission window one. The next two workouts will be Saturday to, it's like midday Saturday, Saturday to Monday, submission window two, two events here, two events here. They say every workout program should be do, done or able to be done in a one hour group class setting in the affiliate, which is an important thing when we start speculating of what movements could be or not be in quarterfinals this year. And that they are in the same vein and I would say attention to affiliate owners, what they have available with the top 25% coming in, building off basically how the open went as far as programming. And then the last thing they said is that they won't. So the, the workouts for team, which will be early, I believe will be on the, when will they be released? I should know this. Team workouts, quarterfinals, schedule. Let's see. Share this tab instead. Um, registration, six day starts. Team competition starts on the third. All right. So open registration, or sorry, quarterfinals is going to be on Monday. So this coming Monday. Teams start on the third, that Wednesday. They won't release any floor plans or equipment lists on the Monday before the Wednesday competitions where the teams go on the third and then the individuals will go two weeks later on the 17th. Now, the reason why that's a topic of conversation is because in the last three years of quarterfinals, they've always, almost before the open starts, they've released an equipment list, mm -hmm. what will be used in online competition that's before the open. They've done that the last three years. And then the Monday before the Wednesday where the events get released, they've released all the floor plans for each event. So not only will you know the number of workouts being programmed, not necessarily the number of scores you'll be doing or submitting. That's a question out there. But you'll at least know, hey, in workout one, there's a barbell and a rower. In workout two, there's a pull-up bar and a box. And then they had all these constraints, which was part of the problem last year for affiliate owners, is that there was too much constraints on the floor plans, which this year in the open, like you don't need floor plans. And they programmed that for a reason. You only needed one dumbbell in 24.1. You need a rower, a barbell, and a rope. You could put it basically wherever you wanted except over the top of it. <laughs> right. And then on the 24.3, uh, it was two barbells and a pull-up rig, and the bar just had to be five feet away from the pull-up rig. That, that was the only restrictions they put on there, and it's more for safety than it is for standardization of the floor plans, which is what they've done in the past. This year, we're not getting that at all. We just have the number of events or workouts that they're going to program, and that's all the information that we'll get this year. Yeah, so my gut reaction when I saw all that and I know we're not supposed to be cussing anymore on the show or trying to bring it down at least some. I mean, <laughs> my, let's just my, be true. My, to my first comment was, oh, shipwreck. <laughs> 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 
right? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, what come on. Really? Show. <laughs> oh, what a ship show. Um, because we have already said so many times mm -hmm. how important this the programming for this particular event is because of the massive cut mm -hmm. that you have going from the field to what actually moves forward. Right. So if, if we went like on the open side and we said, okay, well, it doesn't really matter because 25% are going to you know move forward anyway. And it's supposed to be inclusive and it's supposed to be this and it's supposed to be that. And then all of a sudden we get to this one and the same general plan is put in place like that makes me nervous because we've seen what has been in the quarterfinals in the past and i'm not saying that they have done spectacular mm -hmm. programming in the quarterfinals in the past i mean there have been some that have been completely inappropriate completely like misplaced um workouts for the the field that is competing in that particular stage yeah and what they're trying to do and, and with the, the type of athlete that they're trying to get to the next uh, stage, which would, be, which would be the quarterfinal or the uh, semifinals. Um, it makes me really nervous because it's important. Like this is a very important stage for a lot of people. It's not just, can you play? Are you going to get a shirt that says, Hey, I'm a 25 percenter. No, like you're trying to make it like you, you, these are the, these are the competitors now mm -hmm. and you're trying to make a place. So if we, if the programming and the plan and the idea is still trying to sit in the idea of the open of like everyone can do it and let's make it easy for the masses and inclusive, then we are really missing the boat here mm. as far as what we're trying to do moving forward. And well, I think that that's bad. And we're going to expand on this next week a little bit. Um, actually, I guess this will be part of this conversation because next week quarterfinals is starting for teams. Right. So, well, we'll wrap that into this is that you said this, so I'm going to double down on it. This year's quarterfinals and what they program will be the most important programming they've ever done for right. an online stage. Yeah. And the reason is, one, you're inviting 15% more people to quarterfinals this year than you did last year. We're going from 10% to 25%. What comes with that outside of just people is a wide range of abilities, skill sets, and strengths. Wide. In the top 10%, it was already that. Now it's even more. Like there's certain semifinals that I think have scaled athletes that made the top 25 because of a specific number they were going to take no matter what. It's not the number of RX people. It's just a number on the leaderboard. Right, right. So if you're taking 1,000 people, only 300 did RX, and the next 700 were all scaled, like they're making it to quarterfinals this year. It's okay. just a number on the leaderboard, not RX or scaled. With that 25%, you are also, which is the main focus, I think, I don't want to say what sh should be done, I'm just speaking out loud, of to qualify people to semifinals. And for the first time ever, you have the least number of spots available for the best semifinals in the world. Two years ago, there were four semifinals in North America, and all of them took 40 men and women. In Europe, you had two semifinals that took 40 men and women. That was 160 total athletes for men and women in the U.S., and then 80 total in Europe. Last year, you cut that number in half as far as number of semifinals. U.S. had two, but they added 60 per semifinal. Uh -huh. Same with Europe got dropped to one, but they added 60. But they still took out 40 from the U.S. qualifying semifinal field. It was 160 total down to 120. Europe, it was 80 total down to 60. This year, only 80 men and women between the two semifinals in North America, we'll be advancing to semifinals. 40 per. Same thing in Europe. In two years, we have cut the qualifying field to semifinals in half. Right. Which means you have that few moving on with a bigger pool moving in, and you have to get those 40 right. 
And the only way you can do that is with programming. The only way, the only filter you have left is what you put on the floor for those four events. Now, I, it is completely possible. And you have to balance both. I, I think it is completely possible to do um, appropriate events to get the right people through mm -hmm. without having to have some super elaborate setup. Now, I, I think that generally if if they're talking about you know in a classroom setting whatever so i don't i don't see there being 25 foot segments mm -hmm. I, I don't see those types of things being in there but like in a regular classroom you can see handstand push-ups you can see wall balls you can see wall walks there can be lunges if they're going to do something like that um there can still be rings there can still be all of those yeah. things are still in there and it can still be done but here's where here's where i think it gets Oh man, dude! I swear, if they do something, I'm gonna lose it. If, if they have four events, I like we're just predicting doom and gloom. Is it? Oh my god! Well, with, with <laughs> you hope for the best, but you expect the worst. Is that what it is? That's you know, true. that's true. That's I mean, that sounds like my wife to a T. <laughs> um, if they, I'm not do, pessimistic. I'm just realistic. Right. <laughs> if they do the classic four with a, a two part workout and they do a lift on that one workout. If they do that normal type of a setup, which they've done in the past, which we have complained about so many times, they, that will do, that will not move people through correctly. Mm -hmm. If they go light and all inclusive, like they did in the open, that will be a mistake like that. Like if they, if the heaviest weight, the heaviest weight only being 185, 125, 125, 135, 125. Um, that is a mistake. This has to be the most least specialist programmed event with a with the heavy, heavy hand on general physical preparedness. Yes. I, I mean, and that means that you, you we don't need to be doing one rep maxes. But there's got to be weight in there. If that means that you're going to be doing gated stages where you work your way up, fine. Mm -hmm. But you 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 have to have weight in there. Not the thing where you do, all right, guys, we're going to start off with a 275-pound clean. And then maybe you know splatter some burpees in there just to make people think that they're burpees. They'll get one, and it's like, great job. Yeah. No, they have it, – it oh, man, dude, there's so much thought has to go into these things. Same thing with skill. Okay. Like well, we let's saw – uh, yes, but like, let's layer this because you're we're like shotgunning everything right now. No, because we're still at the beginning here. Yeah, um, I want to get to Judy's question really quick because somebody answered it, but I want to do it better justice because now that Judy is new to CrossFit, yeah, Judy, uh, how did people qualify for regionals back in the day? So back back in the day, at its highest attendance or acceptance of participation, there's basically a five week open that qualified directly to regionals. And at its peak of in invitations, there was, I think, 17 different regions in the world, and they took the top 60 in every region to go. And then they whittled it down to 48. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then maybe 40, and then they combined certain regions. They started combining regions, and then they would take, like, the top 20 from this one and the top 20 for that one, and then they'd all qualify. So it, it's come a long way, but that's where we're at now. Um, well, to, to your point, before we get to like, Hey, what can you do? What can't you do? What you think they could do or, or not is to your point of programming. And I actually had this conversation with Adrian Conway on one of the recaps, I think it was 24.2. And we've always said is that when the open was the open to Judy's question to qualify directly to semi uh, regionals or even directly to the games, it was like, how do you balance programming for a couple hundred thousand people to test the best and let the other ones play in the sand for a little bit? And it was like, oh, that, that balance of it, how hard is it to do that? And he's like, you guys aren't going to like this. It ain't that freaking hard. And you know right. what? Right. He's not wrong. <laughs> it's not that hard to make good tests for the elites and let everybody else get in the mix a little bit and not feel like they're totally outed. It's not that hard. Right. right. It's not. It, it requires some thought and attention to details. And you always got to look out for the, the loophole grundlers. That's 
Sorry. Yeah. Hey, right. it's, it's, yeah. it's a race. Yeah. I look for right. those races. You're, you're a race. necessary evil when it comes to that. He was like, <laughs> nope, nope, nope. <laughs> Dang it. Got him. But to your point of like what it could be is like, first off, let's just say this out loud. It's not that hard to do. It is harder with less events. We saw this in the old um, last chance qualifier days. The, the less events you have in a qualifying stage, the more perfect the programming has to be. At the CrossFit Games, when there's 13, 15 events, you could put one in the stands. Ah, you, two or three. Like, oh, those are kind of the same. The, like, game, yeah, we'll, the game we'll should have, I think the game should have specialist type events. They should 100%. Yeah, because we already know they're fit. Yes. Now we got to know if they can do anything. Like that's that's part of it, but not here though. Uh, Glee question. Honest question. Do you think Dave or Boz listens to these concerns? I do believe they listen to the concerns. I don't think they listen to this podcast. <laughs> yeah, I, I think if anything, people will bring up comments today. Yeah. yeah, people will watch this and then give them misinformation about what was said, and then <laughs> they'll they'll uh, not watch it and just make assumptions based off the poor information that's given to them. Um, okay, so we've we've laid the foundation of what quarterfinals is as far as what it's been and what it's going to be. Four events is what we know. Floor plans we're not going to get. The question I have for you as an affiliate owner to you is not get so quarterfinal stage. The affiliates are running this competition for CrossFit. The only way this season continues is if quarterfinals happens. And the only way quarterfinals happens is if affiliate owners like yourself take on the opportunity I'll just put a positive word, to run quarterfinals for CrossFit. That is the only thing that is currently happening. Quarterfinals would not exist if it wasn't for affiliate owners because they have to run the competition. They're doing it for CrossFit. So with that being in your court, the last three years when you say got an equipment list even though you didn't know what would be where, but you did get a floor plan and you knew what was going to be where, you just didn't know the events uh, what does that pull-up bar mean? What does that barbell mean? We don't know what the weights, like that wasn't a problem, but now that it's 25% moving on and you are not getting any floor plans even a couple days early, is that making your life easier or more difficult? For planning, it obviously makes it do you even difficult. need floor plans at all a few days in advance to run this a little bit better for your affiliate? Is that something you need or just be nice to have? Um, if, if the particular event is complicated, then yeah, it's something that I would need because I need to logistically figure it out. If they're like, hey, look, you're not getting any, you won't need them. Okay, cool. Which is what they've said. Fine. That's fine. Um, I, I'll, I'll say this and I, I know that like, you know, I've listened to, um, JR talk about this a handful of times about being running some high level athletes within your CrossFit gym and being the affiliate manager and trying to manage all that stuff. I, I maybe I've just been a competitor too long, but I don't care how hard the floor plan is. I don't care. Like my, my athletes that are competing as an owner and as an owner or are you talking about as an athlete specifically? I'm talking, I'm talking about as an, as yeah, an I know owner. that's your athlete attitude. No, I know it is. The, 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 the thing is, is that I have always felt, I guess I felt comfortable enough that, okay, whatever the workout is, we're, we'll make it happen. If I have to make it to where, okay, Either I'm going to run a separate time frame for the people that are really into it, and they're like, you know, they need to have specific times or whatever. Or if I if they're in a particular class, I'm like, hey, this person and this person, this person, they have to have these lanes. Everyone mm -hmm. else, we can kind of make our way around because it, it doesn't really matter. You guys just want the workout, but they're there. Let's give them the space to do this. We'll let everyone go, and we'll go that way. Like I'm, I will accommodate to it. I'm not going to get bogged down and think that 
what I don't want is I don't want CrossFit making it easy for me because it's not about me. We are in competition stage now where these athletes are trying to get to the games or at least they're trying to compete at a certain level. Mm -hmm. So don't worry about being inclusive to the entire community. Don't worry about being, you know, we want to make sure for the affiliate owners that it's okay for them. And we don't want to put them under stress. It's not about me. I'm not competing. Just, I mean, yeah, okay, if you can make it easier for me so that I know to make it easier, then cool, yeah. But if you're telling me, hey, look, you're not going to need to worry about it. Yeah. All right. Then then a lot I of hope trust. that we're okay on that. Then I'm, then I'm good. A lot of trust. Because, well, last right? year that was not the case. True. But they gave us a lot of things. In the open, they said, hey, you're not going to have to worry about any of the pieces. Here mm -hmm. it is. And they laid it all out. I'm like, okay, I don't need to worry about any of those pieces. And that's where I, I, I bank more trust into what they're saying. It's like, because uh, I, I know that I know there are a lot of affiliate owners that are worried about the quarterfinals. That's all everyone's been talking about since they said 25%. Because they look at the programming from last year's open and last year's quarterfinals. And they're like, there is no way. There's no way I can run this with more people. And there's no way the bottom 15% that are advancing can do any of these workouts. There's no way. And they're right. But CrossFit has said, we've been listening to the feedback, we've been listening to the affiliate owners, and we will make it easier for affiliate owners to run. Floor plans are out the window, basically. And in the open, I would say they did that. 100%. So they've earned some trust into if they're telling us this, hey, you the floor plans are so minimal or like it's not even worth your time to worry about that. You'll be fine. You'll be able to, they said, you'll be able to run this in an hour class with a normal right. class time. Right, okay. Right. So to me, I'm like, okay. So all that said is you're not worried about it. I'm not, I'm not worried about it. Okay. I'm not worried about what I'm they, glad I asked you that question. Cause honestly, well, see, you're an affiliate rep. You're going to hear the other side of it. I do hear the other side of it. I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. And, and I, dude, I honestly, I, and the, the argument is almost similar to the old school argument. Well, what's CrossFit doing for me right now? And I'm like, I don't want them to do anything for me. Just make that name awesome, and I'm going to do my thing. Yeah, make it Make awesome. this program awesome, and I will do my thing. Mm -hmm. Like, that. that's how I feel about it. Yeah. I don't want the race to be based on me because I'm not racing. Uh, mm -hmm. the affiliate my as a affiliate manager just just get if we're not worried about s logistically setting up the program and you're telling me that like the general equipment that that all gyms have okay so you're not yeah. telling me that we need to have like concept two bikes or something or cool. echo bikes even though i dave hinted in a week in review that he would like to see that one day i did hear that i'm like oh do you really let me know because i right <laughs> now i'm currently working for my you know i'm i'm increasing my my fee here so i, I had, need to put my mind to that right now shitty assault bikes i need to refurbish <laughs> immediately to buy one echo bike <laughs> right <laughs> right um but i i want like Put your emphasis not towards me. Like that's an easy fix. Mm -hmm. Like you already did it. Like, okay, if, if we're not, if we don't, if I don't need 25 foot lanes, boom. Yeah. I'm good. Mm -hmm. Now give me good workouts. Okay. That's what I want. Fair. That's what I want. Uh, Avera, I'm going to, this question, this is a good question. With all the bitching going on, look at the open. Did the athletes you think are the best show up at the top? It does not matter the ball, pull it out of the hopper, the cream will rise to the top. Uh, let me, so this goes back to the old, um, I Matt think that, and Tia one. So the, the program Matt was Tia Rich is like, hey, Matt won the CrossFit Games, T won the CrossFit Games. It doesn't matter what was programmed, the fittest people still won. And that is a inaccurate false statement because it doesn't matter what you programmed because they are the fittest ones in the world, but that doesn't mean the programming doesn't matter with this cream rise to the top concept. That is totally a wrong way to approach this and view this if they sit back and like, listen, the top 10 in the world from each semifinal, they're gonna qualify. Who cares about the bottom 30? We're gonna get our eventual games champion in this net anyway, so then it doesn't matter. That is not the way anybody should be looking at this because it should require more effort and attention and respect 
for the group that is taking this test that is quarterfinals, other than, well, the fittest are going to make it, right? And oddly enough, if you guys look at the cuts from last year, from the 60 to 40 this year, there's a few people that performed very well at the CrossFit Games that wouldn't even made quarterfinals you based off that? the number that they're taking or maybe the programming that will be, a la Yella Hosta. Top 10 at the CrossFit Games. Wouldn't even be, he wouldn't even, now, would he have performed differently if he knew what it is? But we're just saying, like, that's the, that's the importance. And the fact that we're only taking 40, there's less spots and there's less workouts. I mean, there's less room for mistakes with the programming. So let's, let's uh, shift gears a little bit, programming stuff. With the concept of floor plans being minimal to nearly non-existent, except for maybe safety concerns, right? Don't put your barbell underneath the pull-up rig and don't put your box right next to the barbell kind of a thing. With the understanding of... 25% is in this pool, and the fact that all these workouts should be able to be done in a general group class setting at any affiliate, potentially in your garage if you have the prerequisite equipment. When I hear that for a garage, I think you have a pull-up bar, you have a rower, you have 300-something pounds of weights, and... In that pull-up, you in a wall, right? That's what I would assume as you have the ability to, if you have the equipment, right? Which all of those seem pretty basic, but not as easy for some, depending on the others. With that information, what would you wholesale remove from the programming that we've had in the past because of those three things? Shuttle runs, handstand walks, walking lunges. Uh, the muscle up one is tough. The ring muscle up one is tough because if it's in a garage, that could be a tough. Oh, one. Halpin. Thank you for adding this. Good call. And yeah. that's actually a great call. Yeah. The fourth one is the programming will be the same from age 16 to 54. Same mm -hmm. movement, skills, weights, everything. Thank you, Halpin. Um, so any, any sort of, oh yeah, rope climbs won't be in there. So you think anything with 25 feet is out? I think anything with 25 feet is out. Okay. Um, that doesn't mean you can't do lunges. You could do, I think that, I, I honestly could see back step lunges. Ah, oh, okay. I could see that in, play, you know, and in lieu of. That might happen in the open. Right. So in, in no one, I think everyone was kind of excited for that idea, seeing something like that, but I don't see... Um, I, I, as far as anything walking, I don't think we will see wall balls. I wall balls are in there. I, I don't think that garage or not that, that I don't see that not being in there. Everyone can go right outside the garage and do wall balls. All right. Fine tuning yours. Anything that has a 25 foot distance out, out, you said rope climbs out, out, um, GHDs out, out. What else? Because you can't, there's. I don't see. Think of that's that. That's the affiliate one. Not that I think that people wouldn't have that in a garage gym. Mm. I don't think that you're going to have enough GHDs in an affiliate no to run shot that. They're going to be in a right, <laughs> in a, right. A, so no. An affiliate but, might have, on average. Oh man. Okay. What would you see the over under of number of GHDs on average in an affiliates? I would say that number is less than two. On average. Yeah. It, definitely. Without a doubt, on like on average, without a I doubt. I saw this. Uh, this was actually this. This um, reel has been making its rounds in my algorithm, and it was like, "Hey, what's the average number of pull-ups a girl can do?" Like, if you just took the world. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And the average is actually zero. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. And, we, and ours is like, if uh, I don't know what ours is. Who was it? Who, it was the girl that did that. Uh, she announced it and said that. Like, yeah, and then across the putting it up. Yeah, okay. Well, that that was totally different. That was like a Washington Post thing for me a while ago. But like that thing has been going. Like the average is zero. You're like, you're right, which is really cool because as CrossFitters, we're like, what? Right. right. <laughs> and it's ridiculous. Right. But it, we look at a worldwide selection. Right. Yeah, the yeah. number is so small that it's zero. No, I totally agree. It, I look at I, that. I, honestly, over and under two, easy, easy. Over under. Yeah. Over under one and a half. 
Yeah, dude. I think it's under. You know how many I had in my affiliate that I had for a decade? Two. The most I ever had at any time was two. I would say, well, the most I would have is two, but I would probably count it as one and a half. I had one good one, and then we had one that was like, with a, it the worked. Ankle, yeah, totally. Pat it worked just fine. Just slide up every time you did it. <laughs> it worked really fine until Pat Barber came to my gym for that. And he's like, Bill, what the hell is this thing? Like, what is it, GHC? <laughs> no one fucking used it, dude. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah. So yeah. that was my one and a half. It's like, what is, what is this? <laughs> This is a, a bag holder. That's what this is. <laughs> like a sweaty t-shirt in the middle of the workout. Uh, yeah, so those, yeah, those won't be there. <laughs> they won't be there. Which, okay, right. we've complained about, you know, those being in the quarters on the path. I don't think it should be dumbed down for the people that can't do stuff. No, but like if if we're putting in the caption of can be done in a group class setting, right. those are 100% out. 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 I mean, shoot, the first time they got programmed was in 2021, and it was GHD sit-ups, rope climbs, and pistols, pistols. with 180 of them. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, we weren't even worried about who had a GHD. We were worried about how many people were going to get rhabdo. <laughs> Remember? Well, I, think, I think that literally was titled The Absolute Worst Programmed workout ever in crossfit yeah i could see that ever i uh, so i'm with you on rope climbs i'm with you on gts i would bet money that those are gone actually be a good good prop rep tyler we, yeah heat one heat one heat one heat one um halpin Cap had GHDs, rope climbs, and pistols about a month ago. Huh? Did they have 180 of each of them, though? Well, no. What I'm just saying is like using those in a group class. If it's cross at affiliate programming, they put those in there. Mm. Still. If, dude, if they do that, but then fine. that... I'm still saying no. Same. Still saying no. Because... If that's the case, we, we should like, had them in the open. 10% then. in there, and like 25% is going to go there. <laughs> right. Let me go just back to the safety issue. Right. Um, I do think we will have uh, 25 feet. I, I think the shuttle run's coming back. Of, or, or maybe a lunge for distance. Now, I do know that we have had the 25-foot lane mm -hmm. since, what, 2016? When did we do the walking lunge? Yes, the 2016? 2016. So we've had that for a long time. There have been complaints right. ever since then. You know, people with their different shape. But the biggest complaint that year stuff. is because they use barbells in that, and it, like, cut half of the gym out right. of the barbell space. But when they right. did it with dumbbells. And then they did it with dumbbells. Like, right, right, right. right. Lot, like, it, it was actually a bit easier to, to do. I, I, I just, I... I uh, I think that because I think that they're going to lean into it the other way. That's why I don't think the 25 foot will be there. I think if they do any sort of lunging, they're going to do it in, they'll do it in place. And I think that, um, I mean, they've lunged for steps before it was yeah. still a distance traveled, right? Last year's quarterfinals. It was right. a single arm dumbbell overhead for eight lunges. Right. And I think that, I think that that can work. I, the one thing that bums me out, because I really do think that they're not going to have the 25 foot, is is uh, not having handstand walks in there. Because there's no way to do handstand walks if you don't have the distance. Well, no. <laughs> you know, I mean, so I, like that that bums me out. And I, I kind of, it's hard for me to say that they wouldn't have handstand walks in the quarterfinal, in, in a quarterfinal setting. Mm -hmm. But I just, I think that they would opt to have that out um because of the 25 foot i just don't see it especially especially without the floor plane deal i just don't see it yeah thomas imagine it. cross at oslo is going to do quarterfinals with 109 people did you see that they qualified 109 to quarter Dude, holy shit yeah <laughs> oh you'd have to like designate class times for people to come during the day wow Okay, so hey, they, they, if they they the 5 a.m. class, the 6 a.m. class, the 8.30, you got to sign up for those. I totally. Well, it. I mean, how many people did they have doing the Open then? Josh, Mack, there's never been a ring dip program. They're not going to do one now. No way. All right, so let's let's finish off this this one part. 
And there's 250 of you guys hit the like. You guys are doing awesome. Yeah, guys. Badass. 253 people. And uh, shout out to Element26 while you guys are here. Element26.co. Quarterfinals is coming. Teams, you don't have much time. I cannot believe the team quarterfinals is coming in four days. Dude, I know. It's crazy. I need to redo our freaking... I have so many things <laughs> in the schedule that I just like totally screwed up. So I need to like push all these or something. But uh, yeah, go to element26.co. Use the code GWT15. I need more thumb tape. I've used all mine. I love that thumb tape. I use it, I use it for two. I use it when I don't need it. Hey, we're doing, <laughs> we're doing bench press. Got to get my tape out. We got, <laughs> I got a couple guys like that. <laughs> um, all right. So we agree on at least two rope climbs. GHC's out. We're on either side of the river as far as the 25 foot being in play for whatever it could be. Right. Is there anything else you are taking out because of? 16 to 54 demographic taking the test done in a group class setting, minimal floor plans, and it's only going to be four. Any, any movements, uh, pistols out. Pistols. Yeah. Pistols are out. Yeah. I'll Although was, we think they should just be out of online competition period. <laughs> End of story has nothing to do with quarterfinals or number of the events. Um, uh, pullovers. Oh, pullovers! I've seen people like, oh, is, all right, pullovers. Yes. Um, I I don't I don't think that there will be like a new movement thing. I don't think like V ups. All right, so here's question number two for you. As we, I, I can't think of anything else eliminated. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, heavy snatches. I'm like, why not? Depends on how you get there. Yeah, you're not set up. Um. And we're thinking about movements that have been traditionally in quarterfinals, which GHDs and rope climbs, I think, have been in every year, minus maybe one. Or no, every yeah. year. Every year. yeah. Anyway. <sighs> Things. Oh, here's one. Double unders. Think double unders will be in? Okay. Well, here's going to be the question. What do you think should be in quarterfinals? This for four events, movements, well, not even programming schemes yet. But movements that we didn't have in the open that you think will, uh, well, before we get there, do you think we'll repeat any open movements? Uh, no. No? No. You don't think, I think doubles and rowing are still on the table. Unless the, uh, uh, JR had said this, unless the only monostructural thing you're going to do is shuttle runs, which if you, I'll tell you what, if you don't bring back doubles and rowing, you're opening up the 25 foot shuttle run because they can't uh, not do a monostructural movement. No. All right. I, well then if that's the case then I would go rowing, I don't, I don't know if they would do, I mean, that was a, that was a healthy number of double unders. Now, I mean, if done, you're getting uh, eight to 10 rounds, you're doing four to 500 double unders. I could see double unders being plenty tested into quarterfinals, but I feel like that rower's got to come back. The rower, the rower wasn't enough I, I, for what it was. It's a placeholder or a pace holder. <laughs> pace holder. No, 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 totally. But it, not as far as um, I think it, when it comes back, it's coming back, it'll be used as calories. It's not. Well, and that too. And I, I think. It. The rower had a big part of that just because the most time you spent doing right, anything right. in 24.2 was sitting on the rower. Right. But for the masses, whether it's top or bottom, you still weren't using it as a right, major right. Um, pinch point of the workout. It was just keeping the pace at which you started with for all of them, right? Could you go right to the bar and deadlift it? Could you not miss on your double unders and get right back to the row and just hold this sustainable 5K-ish pace? Yeah, you know what? I mean, shit, okay, you think they, do you think they'd have burpees again? <sighs> I mean, I want to say no, but... Like burpee box jump overs, burpee pull ups, burpee. Yeah. I and I I don't I think. No, we do not need to cross it total again. No, no, God, no, no. I'm just. I feel like that's just a troll comment. Um. Uh, I'm. I'm. I. 
All right. Yeah, I like the rower. The rower was back. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I think rower as well. I was thinking overhead double double unders. Uh, no, just things from, well, things from the open. Things yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, I don't think we'll have thrusters again. I don't think we'll have deadlifts again. Dumbbell will come back in some form or fashion, probably with two. Yeah, just that, that, that uh, dude, I, I'm, I'm holding my fingers for a devil press. <laughs> it's not happening, dude. Dave's there. It's not, ha- it's not happening. It's going to happen. <laughs> It's like me and my Turkish get-up thing. <laughs> it's going to happen. Um, <laughs> I think rower will come back. The dumbbells will be two. I think chest-to-bar and bar muscle-ups can also, or at least chest-to-bar can come back. Everything else I don't think we'll see. So thrusters, bar muscle-ups, um, deadlifts, double-unders. Burpees, though. Good. <sighs> Maybe it's a different form, right? You said row meters to row cows. Maybe it's burpees over the dumbbell to bar facing burpees. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, I can see the row come back. Row will be calories. Okay. All right. Uh, now, I don't. I just don't think double unders. I don't either. I mean, that's me. That's honestly, that's probably my subconscious going, please don't have the double unders again. Please, please don't have, you got a decent day. Just let it go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Things we think could and should be brought in to quarterfinals. A heavier lift. All right. Not not a not a uh, one rep max. Follow up. Okay, so there's my follow up. Heavier yeah. barbells, I think, have to be in quarterfinals. Jeez, dude, without a have doubt, to be. It's a must. But how? Do you think it's going to be a stop gap? Yeah. Either lift portion or like the twenty one fifteen nine nine fifteen twenty one style, where the weight just gets heavier per round, or do you think it'll be either a one rep max in a single event or a part B. So you get an extra score or well, I don't want I, any of those. I do not want them to do a part B where you lift your one lift. Okay. Uh, I, I don't want that. I don't yeah. want that. There's no reason that a one rep max lift needs to be 20% of your points. I just don't, I don't buy it. And you know that they won't change the scoring cause they never do. So they're <laughs> not going to adjust the scoring the right way to make it the right way. If they're going to go that route. Um, I think the best way would be to have a stop gated where the weight is increasing all the way through, um, as it increases up on whatever it is. Um, I can see that being a clean and jerk. Yep. I can see that being a snatch, you know, um, uh, I, I can see it being a squat clean. Okay. Um, and any of those would be, any of those would be cool. Um, now, yeah, the the two seventy five clean and jerk and the that was a I liked the barbell. Yeah, you're for, right. It's a heavy barbell. But <laughs> for what it was, fun. like that would have the, the way <sighs> it didn't need to be that. Like that wasn't it wasn't about like okay because you're you're you basically cut the field down to a particular percent on that one. Mm-hmm. You can get the same thing by increasing. Start it a little lighter and build up from there. Like you can totally do that. That the 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 stop gate of that is the best way we've said it so many times and not even just us other other programming jr and 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 taylor and like the other people that are out there in the programming space Mm. have said the exact same thing like that the general consensus is that that is the best way to get everyone to play and to really have your people that and, and it's not just are you strong but you have to have the fitness yeah and that's what this stage is about like a 16 to or a yes. seventeen three. Well, yes. I heard a funny thing that you mentioned that is the things that Dave said about the programming for quarterfinals. It says I will have the ability to start every workout. Yep. Not to finish it. Yep. And to me, that sounds like it gets harder as you go on. Yeah. But when we look at everyone's going to get to play in the sandbox idea, is a Ascending weight 
chipper stop gap time gap format with weight better for the masses or is just putting out as like just you have a met like jr said this he's like he sees metcon and a lift because everyone can do the lift you just lift what you can do more people essentially would be able to play in the sandbox at the one rep max than they would in ascending ladder because even the first weight could out some people I'm on the opinion if it outs you in the first barbell, we probably shouldn't be there. But I, I don't think that we need to put that much of a priority on the plane in the sandbox. It hurt like my he, heart to hear, and I don't think he really truly wanted that to happen. He was just saying, is like, hey, this I don't, I don't think he does it, either. He doesn't, but it's like, this makes more sense. Yeah, and, yeah but to what, to, again, to what priority are you trying to do on that? Like, this yeah. isn't about everyone's plane in the sandbox. We already did that. We invited a lot of people to come and play. Guess what, guys? Now you get to actually play with so you, the You wanted kids. to be like, hey, welcome to quarterfinals. The the cage comes down from the top. Yeah. Here, here's another back-to-back -back wrestling reference. You're like, welcome to the quarterfinals. Right. <laughs> I mean, kind of, kind of, I mean, it's like, I mean, and we we even talked about this earlier when we found out what the new schedule was going to look like was the open is the fitness fun run, the, yep. the turkey trot. Right. Now we're competing. Yep. So we don't need to make it so soft and cuddly to start like, okay, yeah, you get to play. Okay. And if you can't do the weight yet, I mean, we want to get the, the general group to, to get in there and mix it up. Okay. But you're going to be like the, that cliff starts cutting people off drastically. Yeah. Not 275 on the first lift. No, Steven quarterfinal essentially needs to test strength and skill no. question mark while doing it in a class setting. No. Quarterfinals should test everyone's fitness level, advancing yes. the strength and the skill, not testing only strength and skill. Right. The fine line there, a fine line there. Again and again, the and, and dude and I hate harping on it, but I'm going to keep on doing it until we do these shows. The, what's the mission statement for quarterfinals? Yeah. So that everyone can play? No, it should be that we are testing a higher range of strength skill capacity of fitness not the best of the, we're not trying to find the fittest in the world uh, at this we're trying to cut that that group down from 15,000 or 5,000 or whatever your your age group is mm -hmm. to 40 yeah and we need to have a a very i mean deep entrenched crossfit defined fitness compilated events to do that and i don't think that a metcon and then a lift what you can lift is going to showcase the correct way of doing that because mm -hmm. you, you end up you end up more having the your specialist getting right. in there and I, I just don't think that needs to yeah. be that way no not in it, the specialists do not belong in semifinals earn earn your strength earn your skill mm -hmm. earn your ability to show the capacity yeah I mean, and that 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 will be your cream that rises to the top. The people that are strong, the people that have these skill levels, if they have the fitness, they'll get there. Yeah, that's cool. So this is an earlier question that Halvin brought up. Someone is talking about like releasing information or doing a poll. I was like, listen, if a big part of CrossFit's um, not agenda, that's the wrong word, but desire is to get more people to do quarterfinals this year because they're inviting more. I'm in the camp of if they know before, you can get more people excited. And Halvin's wrote, it depends on if they want registration to be way up. Announcing the workouts before most register, the majority couldn't even start, will limit that. It doesn't matter because no one who is on the fence is going to register for quarterfinals until they get announced anyways. So like whether they announce them before it starts or after it starts, like no one's going to be like, I'm in. But it depends on what the workouts are. It's like, no, no, no. If, if there's that camp, it's show me the workouts and then I'll sign up. That is what the majority of people are going to do. They They're going to wait 10%. for the workouts. They're going to well, they, well, they well, do that with 10%, but they, it's going to be even more. They let 10% in and how many people actually showed up? Yeah. 3 to 5%? True. And so that's where I look at it. It's like, man, if you just gave out floor plans and equipment, it's going to be out there. That can drive excitement and understand maybe it's a couple weeks out and like, okay, if you got a floor plan and equipment and you had two weeks before quarterfinal start, would you kind of like tinker with the program and be like, look, guys, here's what it could be. You can do this. 
as a yeah as an affiliate owner i would as a a, a person that's you know in there with all of the other athletes and a coach, of course I do that. I think that I, I, honestly, I think that would probably help the athletes more just to help and point because then a they add thing. No, I don't think it's a, no, 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 not at all. I mean, if, if you're, if you're wanting people to get in, then it's like, okay, like I'm, I'm an, I'm not an affiliate owner. I mean, I am, but like for take this example, I'm not an affiliate owner and I'm 18%. Yeah. Okay. I have no idea what I'm getting myself into. Yeah. I saw what they did last year in the 10% and I, there's no way. But if all of a sudden I see some things, it's like, oh, okay, I can do a rower. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh, I didn't see any rings in here. So it's like, oh, I, I'm not, I don't have to worry about ring muscle ups. Okay, cool. I'm in. I mean, like that to me would psych them up or even drop the idea of, some random movement. You don't know what order. You don't know what event. Mm -hmm. Get ready for a barbell, everyone. Yeah, yeah. How's that rower? Did you look? Did you lube up that chain? I mean, something to, like it kind of sucks people. It's like, oh, so the rower's back in. Okay, the rower's back in. All right, that's my thing. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. I, like you could do those things would get people fired up. Speaking Not, of getting getting people fired up, Bill, people, would you like to answer Sean's question here? Can yes. all people masters do handstand push-ups? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of old people don't like to do them because it does hurt our necks if we decide to get too competitive and like Kipping's gone basketball ourselves or off the ground, which happens. But yes, they can. That's funny. Yes, they can. Okay. Next question. Movements you would like to see in quarterfinals. Overhead squats. Okay. Um, clean and jerks, or like a clutch. Yeah, clean and jerks. Okay. Um, Give me five. Toes to bar. Two more. I, I, lunges. Oh. And we already said rowing, so I'll put rowing in there. <laughs> so you said overhead squats, clean and jerk, toes to bar, lunges, rowing. Yeah. All right. I'll put in wall ball shots, ring muscle ups. Uh, a box. Put in a box. I don't want to copy yours. I know, I know, I I know. So I'm 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 adding to your list. How about that? But, which is really like Everything okay, I, that right there, you're up to eight for me right now. Yeah. <laughs> Everything you have in there, I am adding to. I'm adding wall ball, ring muscle ups. Would you go snatches? Mm. What what was this one? Oh, a box, a box. Um, either burpee box jump overs or box jump overs. Uh, Handstand push ups. Wall walks. Mm, okay. Wall walks and devil press. <laughs> <laughs> it's not your list, though. This is my list. <laughs> and I will say, <sighs> yeah, I'm going to put Superman. Okay, okay, great job. Matches. Great pick yeah. on that. Superman is awesome. <laughs> And then we're bringing in stuff from the op uh, the open, like I said, the burpees. So I, I put that as part of that, right? You said rowing, so we got that as part of that. I mean, those those are ten movements, some new. So now you've got fourteen to pull from, of which you don't need a ton of space, and you can do some wicked workouts with. Mm -hmm. You don't need a lot of measuring either. If it's no. wall walks, it's just two tape lines. Now, depending on what you pair it with, right? You got to just measure a box, you know, wall target, twenty five feet. I mean, that's more measuring than, I don't know. It's weird that I think like that's a lot of measuring. But your right. boxes should all be standardized and everybody should have a freaking 10 foot line in their pen. <laughs> right. And nine, I guess. If you, uh, oh, yeah, that. those. I have a, you, I always had a nine and a 10, but I just like get, get the ball up there or you're scaling to nine. Yeah, yeah, totally. Okay. All right. Next question What type of tests? should be in there. So for example, we had five 
events last year in quarterfinals. Two of them were a 21 15 9 format. One went down to nine, one went up to 21. In those two formats, there was ascending weights based off the decrease of reps and skills based off the decrease of reps ascending. There was a heavy barbell cycling one. There was a skill with the crossover and a dumbbell. Mm -hmm. And then there was the, um, what was the other one? One, two, three, Um, What's the fifth one? I mean, I could look it up. It's right here in front of my face. Yeah, pull it up real quick. I'll look it up. There we go. Quarterfinals, workouts. Share this tab. Last year, <clears throat> individual. Okay, that's the front squat one. That's oh the row V ups. <clears throat> oh yeah 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, I've, maybe I've heard. <laughs> <clears throat> so styles four tests four events four workouts. I had tests hammered at me so much in the last two years or year. <clears throat> four workouts. How are you going to test? We could say that. How are you going to test skills, strengths? That's the appropriate way to use that. That's good. How are we going to test these things? How are we going to test skills, strengths, formats? All right, you got four. Um, I think that we will have a to test like the the, to test some capacity, some volume. um, We'll do like a chipper of a. Um, I, I, we haven't done, I feel like we haven't done like a, a repeating straight, movement right? chipper. Cause like technically the 21, 15 nines were chippers cause the movements changed and the weights did. Well, I no, I think like a, like a classic, like a 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 20 a 180, 60, like 14, like, four, 24, yes, 23.1. Something like that. Something okay. like that. Um, I think that would be. You know, and, and depending where you put the movements and where you, you put that, I just, I really like those. And we haven't had one um, for a while. So I think that would be a, a good one to have. I think that we will have a, uh, something similar to what 24-3 was, where you had one segment of the element and then it increases either if we're talking skill or if we're talking weight, that it will increase as you go up okay. so that you have that stop gate. Intervaled? Like a one minute rest. In between. Nah, I don't think I don't think that one will be an interval one. Okay, I don't think. Um, I, I don't really know if I like the way that they've done the interval setup. Actually, where they have the break into the increasing skill, mm. I almost wish if they were going to do an interval style, that it would be almost like a. a a, like a Tabata style or like 30 on 30 off where you have a maximum to get a maximum number of reps. And then you have a, a set amount of time that you must stop so that like it's forcing that start, stop, start, stop. Mm-hmm. So you have to maximize the time that you have to work Yeah. rather than here's some work and we're going to make you rest. And then you're going to do kind of a different variation of it. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I don't know if they'll do, I don't know. I'm going to say that they're not going to do an interval. Okay. Let me answer Steven's question really quick. Yeah. It's actually yeah. an easy question. I have no problem programming benchmarks all week. I do have a problem if you don't modify and, and vary the stimulus movement patterns and time domains. So I don't think they've done a good job with that. Um, Bailey's question. Thank you guys, by the way, for the questions. Thoughts on quarterfinals of all past open workouts from back when the open qualified people to regionals. As long as they're put together the right way, right? pull from the pool of old open workouts to make the quarterfinal workouts? Because listen, we've said that quarterfinals is the old open. Yeah. As think long about, as they're good. So think about, think about all of the uh, okay. all right, show show idea. Okay. Program the quarterfinals using old open. Work. <laughs> <laughs> there's so many good ones because there's right. heavy weight. Bailey, there's heavy we're gonna, skill. We're going to do a show. All right. We're saving that for next week. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Stephen, for uh, the uh, the questions. Okay. So you had a chipper interval. Which is your favorite interval, let's say, from the open? You had 
the the first one well really the is the overhead squat chest bar pull up one the first interval death by ish i mean that was on an interval basis where you did 10 and 10 two rounds and then That's right and you add like two reps every to three it. minutes or something and then because you got rest and then you yeah. added two reps to it. That was really the first interval style, even though it was more of a death by style. But that's an interval. I, I that one I can see. That's my favorite one. I'll okay. say that right what off. What about the ground overhead bar facing burpee for three rounds? Rest like three minutes, and then the bar muscle ups bar facing burpees one. Remember that interval? Yeah, that one was good. No, it's a, it's but a you don't one. like the rest in the middle like that, or like twenty one point three. Yeah, I don't. I, yeah. Okay, you, but yeah, you I like the death by interval. Form. I like the death by a lot. Okay, I like the death by a lot. Um, uh, I like that you have to make. Uh, yes, <laughs> um, let's see. So I have the chipper. I have the. Well, I'll say that. I'll say a death by for their interval. Okay. Um, I think that there will be a, I think that there will be something that will be a high, like a, it will be a skilled, like a gymnastic -y skill, whatever. Um, if there are ring muscle ups in it, then I could see like wall walks, ring muscle ups and something in the middle to kind of break that. Okay. Uh, some, some high, uh, higher skill since we really didn't have any skill. Mm -hmm. I guess bar muscle up, but people even if they made it there. Um, What's a harder skill? Strict handstand push-ups or handstand walks? I know people that can do handstand walks and can't do a handstand, a strict handstand push-up. Because a handstand walk is more of a balance. Mm -hmm stability stamina skill where yeah. strict handstand push-ups is just straight up strength. strength strength all yeah. right so would you say an ascending skill so last year it was handstand walk ring muscle up wall facing handstand push-ups <laughs> but in a triplet of ascending skills you have three to choose from mm -hmm. as i feel like keeping Handstand push-ups are gone. They're dead. <laughs> but yeah. Wall walks, handstand walk, strict handstand push-up. How would you put those one through three, least difficult to most difficult? Um, wall walk, um, handstand, uh, handstand walk, and then handstand, strict handstand push-up? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. How would you layer that? Would you go... Oh, uh, I would go, I would go wall walk, handstand walk, strict handstand push up. because I want to blow like, okay, ah. so, you, so you guys can all do strict handstand pushups, but now that you've, you've just blasted all of your pressing and stability out and now you're relying, now you have to see like what sort of strength you yeah. might have. That would be it. That would be a fun one. Braylon's question. How many quarterfinals athletes are following main sites? Um, uh, that's a hard question. I think a, a better, not a better question, a different question along the same vein, by the way, thank you for the question, is how many coaches are following main site to help their athletes get ready for quarterfinals? Yeah, how many are watching? How many are watching? Not necessarily it's going to be the same thing it's going to translate to, but I know that CAP and maybe even little.com changed their programming to gear up for the open. They did that intentionally. Mm-hmm. They had a couplets, a lot of movements that were always in, uh, in the open. They, they changed the programming to get people ready for the open. They did that on purpose. Are they doing it for quarterfinals? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So does that mean we're just going to do girl workouts for the, uh, <laughs> for the quarterfinals? Hey, as long as they get rid of all the ones they're currently doing. Um, okay. That would be a fun – I mean – that would I like be, the open conversation, that open workout for quarterfinals. Dude, that's a great – there There were some good ones in there. Yeah. Again, that had a lot of skill. And we and that was back – I mean, granted, we didn't really – we weren't programming to the masses necessarily. It was like, what, you don't like it? Well, sorry, I guess you're going to have to get better at those. <laughs> would you say it's about time for 13.1 to come back? Yeah. 
Totally. I mean, every year, I feel like every year, one of us talking heads in the predicting of the open programming have put that in every year since it's happened. 13.1's coming it back. so good. You guys don't remember, it's 40, 30, 20, 10 burpees to a target, which I think they would change the bar facing burpees for simplicity mm -hmm. of execution for an, uh, an affiliate and ascending weight snatches, squat yeah. snatches. Right. Was it squat snatches? No, it wasn't squat snatches. No, no, it just snatch. Just snatches. Yeah, just snatch. Yeah. I remember watching videos of Dan Bailey and Ben Smith, and I'm trying to find my pace on that one. Well, it was, no, it was Dan Bailey for his rich. Uh, it, yeah, well, those two guys. No, sorry, that was 12.2. Dan Bailey versus Scott Pancheck was 13.1. And I'm not, well, I'm not even talking the, the open announcement. I meant oh. like watching their videos of them doing it after, because I remember, I mean, this is like when you would do the workout like four times. Right. And you're trying to figure out everyone's pacing and watching like Ben Smith and his, you know, right next to his refrigerator doing it. Yeah. Um, that was a good one. Yeah, that was a good one. Again, everyone can do the burpee. Everyone could play in there for a handful of reps and it got the right people to get to the right place. Yeah. Like this, this. Everyone can start this. This is exactly what this quarterfinal should look like because the best athletes are going to have the fitness they're going to have the strength and they're going to be able to make it all the way through. So it will be a race to see how far they can get to. Okay. Get. And this would be a good one. This yeah, would be, yeah. a good, this would be a good time to add it. God, and see, this is the thing is we have, we CrossFit has so many of this style where it is this stop gate. Now we're would they are good at making burpees those, or pull up the lateral burpee that they had from the open. Just, Hey, we already did this. We know how to do it. Just, you know, get over the bar. I'd say lateral. That's fine. Yeah. Because then you don't have to deal with like it, it over the bar. No more space too because you go lateral to your bar. Bar facing burpees adds like 12 feet of space like around your bar. So make it lateral. Yeah. Jeez. That'd be cool. Um, <laughs> all right. I'm going to throw one at you. Now, <clears throat> I was listening to Shut Up and Scribble with JR and Taylor and they, they nerded out. It was fun. It was fun to listen to. And JR, we, we've said this, and testing a one rep max as a solo event and a small sample size of events, eight or less, is, we would say, as a single modality test, not just a lift. A single modality test by itself is inappropriate. Unless you add in others to offset it. So if you're going to test, and JR made this example of a 5K row and then rest 10 minutes and do find a one rep max snatch in 10 minutes and then rest 10 minutes and then do 30 ring muscle ups for time. Three different single modality tests, balance that out. But each one getting 100 points, which whatever. <clears throat> At least there's a balance there. It got me thinking, I'm like, that won't work for a class setting. It's, it's too long and it's too much stuff. But I remembered... I think this was 2021 that CrossFit did this. It was in the off season and they did this lift, work, lift, move, move. work competition. Yeah. 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 Where the first time ever they actually did something we wanted them to do as far as <laughs> certain things. That's right. And this was, this was able to be done in a class setting and it only took, let me do the math. Six, six, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. We did it. Uh, we did it. And I'll pull this up. Could this be one of those events? One rep max clean in four minutes. So it started it off. So you can get all the warm up you need and the clock starts. Fine. Oh, you have four minutes to establish a one rep max clean power squat, split, whatever, stand up all the way, control the bar, put it down. Two minute break. Max bar muscle ups in four minutes, two minute break, and then AMRAP in eight minutes, 30 double unders, eight single arm dumbbell push press on the right and the left, and then eight lateral burpees over the dumbbell with a 50 and 35. Not this exact workout, but this format, because how do they score it? Every pound was a point, 
Every rep on the bar muscle-ups was a point, and every rep you did in your AMREP was a point, and they added all of that together, and you got one score. They tested strength, they tested gymnastics capacity, and then they just tested CrossFit capacity. Which some you could put in is like, well, then why not make it a max cals in four minutes on a rower? By all means. <laughs> but a format like this, and it could be, it could be just that. All right, you have four minutes to find a max clean. And we start with the clean. That means we've warmed up the class. Everybody's ready to go. And we just hit the weight from there. Most people are going to get two or three lifts max. They're primed and ready to go. You take a two-minute break, and then it's four minutes of toes to bar. Four minutes of toes to bar. Okay, cool. Rest two minutes. Four minutes, max cows on the rower. Or make it five in each section. I don't care. But you have your max reps on the clean, you have your max reps on the toes to bar, and then your max reps on the rower. And if you want to get more cows or more numbers, you can do the whole meter thing that you did in the, in the open. Every 10 meters is one point. Then you're going to offset the number you're going to get on the clean because the clean's going to overpower everything. Right. You're getting 345. It doesn't matter how many <laughs> reps yeah. you get after that. But if you can row 2,000 meters, not 1,000, but 1,000 meters in four minutes or five, you know, make it whatever. This, this format where everything is a rep and you add it together and it's only going to take 20 minutes of your class time. And you could do this in waves. Um, I like the idea of it. I like the options that you have to work with it. Mm -hmm. I think this takes way more thought process than CrossFit has been willing to put into it for one event out of four that they're going to have. How they would score it, I think, would end up being an issue because if, just cold. for the reason. Well, I, I agreed, but like when I like when we did the total, the the Olympic total. Mm -hmm. um, like all of my numbers were about the same based on the three lists that we had the overhead squat. We Except, had the clean and we had the bench. Oh, the other total. Yeah. Um, yeah they were what all between two, they were like, and two like 295 and 300. And I'm like, God dang it. All of them. Um, so it, it, the, the idea is great. I think that it would take way more thought process and testing for them to come up with the right thing so that all three are, and so you don't have one that's overpowering the other one. And I don't know if they would take that time to do that. Well, because even when they've done the one, even when they've done the one where it's like you have the Metcon and then the lift, the way they just kind of go, ah, we'll just score them two to two separate things. Yeah. All right. So let's, let's show how easy this can be done. Cause his, cause what I'm doing here is that maybe this is event one. Okay. Okay. This, this format, not this exact thing. I just wanted I to you. bring this up you. as a talking point. Yeah. yeah. Totally. This is actually what I wanted to have programmed in the open before we just made up our own open. <clears throat> Something like this. You have a lift. It's a max lift, or it could be a max reps, but max lift from the beginning allows, again, everybody to start. Okay, so it's not a certain number of reps like max clean and jerks at 135 and 95 in, in five minutes. I'm not doing that. Max lift. What lift can we put in there that'll actually be somewhat I would say lower so that it won't overpower. So for example, we're not putting any squat in here. We're not putting any deadlift in here. And I would argue to say even putting a clean in here would be a bad idea. But what if it's a one rep max snatch? Five minutes, okay? Five minutes, establish a one rep max snatch. Those numbers for the elites are going to matter because it should matter because we're taking people to semifinals and they're all going to battle in the 275 to 300 club. Right, right, right. For the men. Then you take a two-minute break. And then it's five minutes max what? Would you want a toes to bar or would you want chest to bar? Which one are you going to get more reps on? Which people have been vetted more with? Oh, man. And I say that, five minutes. That amount of time of pull-ups? Give us more reps. 
that amount of time of pull-ups is going to do a shit ton of damage. I agree. And I like toes to bar partly because we're snatching from the floor, which is a pull from the ground with a hinge in the middle, and it's mostly all posterior to get above and beyond. You go ground to overhead in one move. You go overhead to toes, anterior. It's a good offset. I like toes to bar. More people can do them. More people can play. And no one's outed because he didn't have to hit a certain weight to move on to the next five-minute section. You think you could get what? 200? No, sorry, not 200. 100? Five minutes? 20 on the okay. minute? Ooh. Yeah. yeah, no, I, I could get that. Okay. I could and get then that. then you move on to five minutes, max meters on the rower. Um, okay. Every 10 meters is one rep and you just add them together. So I do like the idea of it. I, I think it's fun to think that, especially when we talk about like classic CrossFit, you know, if you're looking at weightlifting, monostructural gymnastic, and we the put it all in there. Weightlifting still overpowers this quite, quite a bit. It, it does. It does. I will push against that and say that this is not the place to have it even though you're adding everything together mm -hmm. you should not have specialty specialty type events here this should be open massive gpp okay quarterfinals massive gpp just up skill and up weight yeah well that's why then i, we I get to semis offered we this, doing this yeah 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 as a one because then the next three just do crossfit Right, you've isolated somehow, right? And not even what I just said and walk through somehow. Right, right, you can right. Easily, easily find a balance here that everything is even. There, like it's it's doable. And then once you've done this, like everyone can play, everyone can play, everyone can play. It's all one score, so you might be great in one. We just got to figure out how to not have the weightlifting count as much. You're right. Oh, then, remember what I said last time? Just make it kilos. Problem solved. I'll cut it in half, yeah. Problem solved. Like if you're snatching 275 to 300, you're getting what? 130 to 140? Yeah. Okay, because it's because now it's kilos, and the rest of the world will be like, "Thank you, guys." Right. <laughs> and then you pick a gymnastics movement that is going to get you around 100 to 100 plus possible, and then on the rower you're getting the same 100 to 100 plus. Five minutes max meters, you're going to get a thousand to 1,200 meters on the row. There's your 120 to 130. Offsets the weight. And then who has the gymnastics capacity in the middle? And don't, maybe it's not even toes bar. Maybe it's burp, burpee box jump overs, and the burpee is one point, and the box jump is another. Do you, av do you take all three scores, average them together? No, just add the reps together. Don't it doesn't need to be that complicated. I got 102 kilos on the lift. I got a total of 97 burpee box jump over reps there and now i'm doing uh, i got 100 and i got 1300 meters on my rower i got 102 plus 97 plus 130 and you get one score i feel like it's not that hard because you just put it in the <laughs> it asks you there's three boxes what was your lift what was your reps what was your reps and then they do the math and they put you on a leaderboard it's not that hard i i i'm not dis i'm not disputing that I know. I'm just talking that. out loud now. No, I know. I'm, I know. Not, talking I'm not talking to you. I'm not talking to you. And then the next three workouts are just classic, exactly what you said it should be. Let's just do freaking CrossFit. Let's do a chipper. Let's do a burner, right? Let's burn it down. 15 to 20 minute chipper style, whatever you want it to be with all kinds of things that everybody can do, but the fastest will reign supreme. Shoot, do it the other way, 20 to 100 and see how people like that. <laughs> Would the intention of doing that style of workout for you be, would it be because you're trying to answer a question of, um, all right, we're, we're letting our lifters lift and we're, we're letting our gymnastic people do a gymnastic thing and we're letting our 
grow a person to it like it like what what is the purpose of doing that for you for for everybody like what would be the purpose of putting that style in there versus just making that a workout like a for time thing for time yeah for rounds whatever just something new Hmm. something fresh Something, something that shows the importance of balance because if like all you do is lift, you're going to get smashed in this thing. If all you do is row, you're going to get smashed in this thing. And if all you do is little burpy micro machine stuff, you're going to get smashed in this thing. If you can do everything at the highest level, you're going to smash this thing. Of which is exactly CrossFit, and that is exactly true. Yeah. However, I'm leaning into the, I'm leading the, more methodology. No, um, dude, I, I I dig all of it. I dig everything that you're saying with it. The, you know, how you, earlier you said that, you know, Bill, you're 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 trusting in CrossFit right now to be able to say if you don't need any floor plans, uh, that, like you'll be able to take care <laughs> of it. Yeah, you're you're, you're, you're trusting me. I'm I'm putting a lot of trust in them to actually go through all the thought process of mm. thinking about that, of which I have not seen yet. Yeah, you're right. I right. can't trust this one to work i trust the it is a lot <laughs> i like it but i i just don't i don't fair. see it fair but it's um cool. or we can just go back to is like yep i'd like to see a long chipper with ascending difficulty of movements and skills as we go from point a to point b i'd like to see a stop gap time of lifts at the same movement um like we've seen like a 16.2. I want to see a really fast pace, high intensity workout, like a 24.1 or a 15.5. Right. Row and I mean, but they already did that last year for teams. And then I just want to see like something that's just like 10 to 12 minutes, WMG classic CrossFit. You, everyone who can do it, no one, uh, it's not going to be a transition style. Like it, it can be done. It can and be as we done. said in the beginning, it's not that hard. It's not, it's there's, not, there's it's, a lot. It, it's, you, you have to think again, they have to really think about what their priority is and who they're trying to like, what should those 40 athletes look like? Not what do the 18 to 25% are they going to enjoy the time necessary? It's not about that. We have to remember where, where we're trying to compete. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can make it enjoyable for everyone to like be involved. But what's the main emphasis of this particular event? If this is the most importantly programmed stage of mm -hmm. any CrossFit games ever, like there's a lot riding on that rather than let's make it so everyone can play. Yep. So And it leads down to this will be the most important programmed CrossFit event online in the history of the company. Even more so when they are taking people to the CrossFit Games directly from the Open. Right, man. So we shall see. We shall see. 255, you guys are freaking crazy. Dude, you guys are awesome. I hope we, I, if I could give a thumb back, I would give you guys a thumbs up. Questions were great. The interaction was great. It was awesome. It was awesome. You guys were great. If you guys want to jump in on our YouTube page, Join the uh, Programmatron Mafia. Love to have you. Mm. Love to have you. All we can promise is that we keep doing stuff for you. We do have a lot of stuff we've been doing lately, dude. Like these, we've been doing, like we've been pumping out the shows. And it's, it's been, been good. Bad. It's been fun, and it's been yeah. fun because you guys are all in here just freaking having a blast with us. Totally. So next week, registration opens for quarterfinals on the first. The events. Four teams will be released on a Wednesday. Can you do Wednesday? Uh, Wednesday I can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, can you do 1.30 your time Wednesday? Uh, let me look at my calendar. Because, I think I can. Because the events should get released around noon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time, and I would be fine doing like a recap of the team programming right okay. after. You know, and then, hey, actually, um, I'm going to my mom's house uh, actually right after this. So I'll be back. A little later on Monday, if we can push the Monday maybe to Tuesday, okay. maybe. Yeah, we got all kinds of things ready. Okay. Yeah, pushing to Tuesday would be good because my kids are off on Monday. Okay. I don't know why. Easter. Easter's over. 
It's, it's over on Sunday. <laughs> Who knows? I don't know. Oh, uh, thank you guys again. Really, so much. We are just as excited and curious as you guys are for quarterfinals. But uh, yeah, that's our conversation. That's what we're thinking about, and that's what we will judge when the time comes. <laughs> <laughs> quarterfinals. Thank you guys. <laughs>